The ancient scrolls speak of a legendary technique only known to a select few. It's said that this technique was passed down from generation to generation as a prized family heirloom. Using it requires centuries of rigorous training, and to unleash it for only a second requires putting your own body at risk. Some have paralyzed themselves using it, some lost their lives, yet the style lives on eternally, taught only to elite Dante players. The world deserves to know. By pressing right on the D-pad, Dante will enter the most technical and obscure stance of them all. Few people know of this style, fewer still know how to use it to its full potential. Much like the widely known and most commonly used gunslinger, Swordmaster's attacks are dependent on your equipped weapon. These attacks are highly difficult to execute, and will require years of practice to use efficiently. Eventually, you'll be able to pull off the highly heralded Star Rave, a move so challenging and thumb-blisteringly impossible that attempting it now without proper technique is literally, physically impossible, and will just result in excruciating hand pain, or potentially even death. Do not attempt this move without first internalizing the teachings of this video and sending a quick prayer to the DMC gods. Do not rush, pay attention and let your brain digest the information. I'm going to be completely honest with you, when it comes to the inspirations behind the Balrog, I'm really only familiar with half of it. I don't watch boxing or really much of any sport. What I am intimately familiar with, however, is this Brazilian piece of shit that has haunted Tekken ever since his introduction. I don't even like Tekken that much, but every time my eyes brush over this man's horrifically disfigured face a deep chill runs down my spine. Words fail to describe the deep hatred I feel towards this character, not because I repeatedly lost to him, but because everything about this asshole is wrong, be it the way he moves or the insufferable way he dresses every single time we have the misfortune of seeing him. With this burning hatred I booted up Tekken 7 to gather footage. Every button I pressed has been singed into my deepest mental repositories of pure, relentless anguish. Each frame felt like an eternity as I watched this sad excuse of a human being stumble from one limb to another like he's playing hot potato with the fucking floor. Eddie Gormless is a bitch character for bitch players that yearn to see their opponents suffer. These people deserve to be corralled to a nearby wall and repeatedly love tapped by a hail of lead. I will shed no tears for their passing, I will not attend their funeral and I will not acknowledge them as human beings, because they wouldn't extend the courtesy. These people prey on your sympathy. Give them an inch and they'll take a dreadlock be deck mile. Other than that, Balrog is pretty fun. Punchy Kiki is Cerberus' younger brother in terms of complexity, designed for people that want a bit more out of their devil arms without needing to go through college to figure out Cerberus's combination of presses, holds, morphs, combo roots, style effects, cancels, devil trigger effects, combo extensions, aerial attacks, cancel windows, best. Each mode has its own respective mood list and sword master moves, with each hit in blow mode and certain hits in kick mode adding to the weapon's ignition. Once you you do more damage and certain moves are enhanced. Balrog has two modes. Akihiko and Akihiko mode is centered around quick punches and sways. Some moves are cyclone attacks, letting them cancel from one move to another while buffing certain specials. I find it kind of weird that a character based around lightning in Persona 3 has a mechanic themed around wind, but I guess it's more interpreted to be a vortex of hits rather than a literal whirlwind. Wrong game. On the ground, Fisty Balrog's moveset primarily consists of combo starters, fillers of big damage in the form of real impact. More on it later. Holding the attack button will cause the best white haired boy to enter welder. While swaying, you can press left or right to sidestep. You're entirely invincible while doing so, kind of like Bitchster except it's actually fun and requires some forethought instead of pressing up and hammering style. By itself, Blow Mode Balrog is a dynamic weapon that could hold its ground without the extra gimmicks. It's practically style independent with its own gap closer that also serves as a janky combo starter. In mid-air, it's an okay filler, but it shines on the ground. Middle break is a nice flow that leaves a very active hitbox which lingers even longer if you're in ignition, giving you ample time to spaghetti across to a different weapon or a style to continue the combo. Rising Dragon launches a little baby uppercut. 
It can be further charged by mashing on style, though it leaves much to be desired compared to real impact. Sheen Shoryu Ken is executed by pressing back plus style while ignited. Explosion clip, you even get a free combo after it. Lomo gets an SS, a score which the scuffed up. Peanut Brain Capoeira mode wishes it can get even remotely close to. Kick mode turns Dante into a fucking idiot. A shockingly effective and extremely efficient Brazilian moron with an array of always useful moves. Practically every attack in leggy mode is worthy of mention, and I hate that this weapon is tainted by Eddie Gomo's stumbling stench. Press almost any button, not Pyromania, and you'll do well. Break Spiral causes Dante to challenge all nearby enemies to a breakdance competition, which they consistently lose cause they ain't got buns. Hun. Firestorm is single-handedly Balrog's best move, and maybe one of the best moves in the game period. With this bad boy around, nobody's getting off Mr. Dante's wild combo ride. Whip it out to start combos. Whip it out to relaunch. Whip it out to buy your family houses. Whip it out to spend some money for no reason. Kick mode's big ignition attack is Pyromania. Except instead of being fun like real impact, it's an open invitation to get absolutely fucking destroyed when facing more than one enemy. Even Flint Wheel has more uses than it. Other than that, kick mode is really good. The imagery that comes along with it is not. Fuck this stance and fuck whatever sodden Brazilian cave that he climbed out of. <laughs> The Rebellion is an extremely underground and underused weapon that has garnered a cult following within the DMC community for its complex and obscure moveset. Most people don't know it has attacks beyond their rave, and to be entirely honest with you, I didn't either. The legendary Devil Sword Sparta that's been hyped up for the entire series is literally just the Rebellion but with more gunk. So pick whichever you think looks nicer, and if you flex about how you only use Rebellion because you're an OG DMC fan, I'd like to ask when you last showered. Sparbellion shines at starting combos, linking ground combos, linking air combos, controlling height, controlling budget. Controlling the population. Press B to launch and Press B and Madeira to hit the baddies. Switch to Bitchster and In JC Sky Star for extra spice points. But why stop at Star Rave? What about Bike Rave? Or Star Revolver? Or Revolver Ocelot? It's the fucking rebellion. Why do you even need S? Honestly, you need to have at least 200 IQ to understand the subtleties of Cerberus. Holding the right button down in the middle of a combo requires a Harvard-level education, and even world-renowned geniuses like Albert Einstein struggle to use this weapon efficiently. Here's Cerberus's mood list from DMC3. Oh, here it is in DMC5. Best get started on that PhD you insect. Not even massive can begin to chip away at this weapon. So let's just start pressing buttons randomly and see what happens. Swordmaster adds a little bit of paprika into the mix, making Sparbellion, and technically DSD, the only weapons that don't have something to do with fire. I guess those budget cuts translated to creative bankruptcy as well. It mostly expands Cerberus's ground options by adding target combos and a bit of mobility, though the non-charge moves are largely ignorable. Holding melee or sword master charges the button's attack. Even though the two charges look the same, you can have both stored at the same time, and the charges will preserve for a split second even after you change weapons. All charge attacks are electricity based, so they also deal stun damage. Neutral release causes Team Rocket to blast off, which looks really nice in conjunction with JC Redline, but I can't shake the feeling that there's another tool to send the enemy flying away. I just can't put my finger on it though. It's some obscure devil arm, or maybe even a gun. It's on the tip of my tongue, but I just can't seem to find the word. Odd. Oh this is the one that's used in combo mads and nowhere else. Moving on forward releases revolver, but a little more spicy. One thing to note is that while executing a charge move, that button's move needs to finish before you can charge it again. However, you can charge a sword master move in the meanwhile, and vice versa. Back releases percussion, a nice AoE that burns DT for extra damage and range. 
The other two sword master charges are how you say, basically the fucking same. Revolution, neutral release, is also an AoE that does less stun and damage than percussion, but comes out much quicker and is air okay. Kingslayer is pretty long, but deals decent damage and can be cancelled early. Though unlike pole play, million stabs and some other moves, you can only use jump, big dick or bitchster to cancel out of it. You think that it also cranks stun like a beast, and it does. Just two reps are enough to stun a fury on DMD, giving you plenty of time to leisurely stroll your way to Balrog and real impact this stoner. On the other hand, percussion also stuns in two reps without all the cancel jank, and DT percussion stuns in one hit, but hits too many times for real impact to finish. Kingslayer does not. Although it's easier to parry with so whatever but then it's so easy to parry fury to begin with I don't know why that'll be a valid trade-off. Either way you have to do two reps to kill a fury, two kingslayers with a parry in between and properly cancel in time to real impact and one DT percussion into real impact. But it doesn't hit enough times but you can just- hey. This one is actually kind of a lot. For the most part, DSD retains Sparbellion's move list, although they're remapped to different inputs. With DSD equipped, Devil Trigger summons swords. What is it with Hitsuno's obsession with summoning swords? That boosts literally every aspect of Dante's gameplay. Depending on which style is active, it provides different bonuses. In Gunslinger, the swords home onto nearby enemies and projectiles as long as you are locked on. Why are you bullying me? In Royal Guard, the swords reduce the amount of damage you take, which is especially funny considering you're already in the style that mitigates all damage at the press of a button. I don't know why Capcom thought this was necessary, but there it is. Swordmaster gives all attacks a trail of swords that set up for easy combos, or otherwise remove any sort of downside the move would have. It even makes Pyromania useful. And lastly, Trickster gives you. Voy a la playa y subió la marea. Holding melee with DSD equipped conjures the swords at the cost of two DT bars, effectively serving as a mini devil trigger without the HP regen, speed, and damage. While in Sword Master, you can summon swords again with the fucking summon swords that act entirely independent of you. They can be spawned while charging meteors, taunting, or in any other state aside from Hitston. Neutral is four-handed, a wide and far-reaching string that hovers baddies nicely. If you didn't have enough stinger in your life, forward style is stingers. Plural. And it is literally what you'd expect a stinger to do. You can also do your best deadweight impression, because they already had the assets on hand and really needed another use for them. And lastly, back style is high times. I'm not going to reuse the joke. DSD also gets drive, which was axed from Sparbellion because... S. Bike swords. Smoking sexy. When the DMC team went about designing the Cavalier, they wanted to demonstrate that the game is still playable with a slower, more chonky devil arm. And I'm pleased to announce that they not only fucked up spectacularly, they botched the landing so hard this dumbass fucking bike broke in half. Having this trash equipped just makes switching to a decent weapon longer than it needs to be. Really, people like it for the hyper armor, but that's for bitches, because not only do you take on scale damage by armoring through moves, the Cavalier R loses it in favor of Redline, the only actually good move in the entire weapon's arsenal, so already, the base Cavalier is going straight into the garbage bin. Good riddance. Cavalier has four purposes, fancy combo resets, breaking guards, and getting absolutely smoked on any difficulty past SOS. It is unreal how long these animations are, and it doesn't get any better when you hit multiple baddies at a time. Let's take Redline as an example, which for whatever reason you can't buffer the input for, but, but let's- Three seconds. Three entire seconds of being absolutely fucked if you miss the jump cancel window. So let's start dissecting these twin pizza slicers. Cavalier R, because the basic Cavalier is worthy of mention, has two main gimmicks, top here and combo chaining. All of these mechanics are so poorly explained by the move list that you'd be forgiven in thinking they don't exist at all. Some moves activate gear wheel, which ones specifically are mentioned in the move list. 
Gear wheel keeps the wheel spinning round and round, indicated by the massive fucking wheel spinning against the enemy's cranium, while lobotomizing the friendly neighborhood demons. Pressing a button will cease the unethical behavior post haste and move on to the next attack. This is called low gear, and it's for degenerates that can't help but mash every button on the controller. The patrician's choice is to wait until the tri close with Mishima juice. Pressing a button now will engage top gear, moving on to the next attack, except the wheels will literally catch fucking fire. If this sounds like it's exactly the same as low gear, that's because it is. Just that top gear is slightly faster. But this all pales in comparison to over top gear, which will require strict focus to execute. Because in order to pull this off, you need to press a button right before a move ends. How do you know you've done it properly? I have absolutely no fucking idea. The move list doesn't help explain it in the slightest, and every article or video on the internet regarding over top gear just effectively says yeah. I dunno. The time between hits shortens and Danny moves on to the next move sooner, but there's no visual indicator you've done it properly. To top it off, the Cavalier can combo chain, letting this clunker chain freely from one move to another without having to JC the recovery. It really was designed to cater to morons. See? So concludes the Dante Saga. The four chakras lie in balance. Big Dick Energy has been made manifest. The cowardice of bitch domains has been exposed to the world. Shit has been slung. And the swords have been mastered. With this, my teachings are complete. And so I fade into the Roman abyss. Bear dicks forever be big. Log JK. More shit coming soon. <laughs>